Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans and you're watching the John Cedars channel from the bunker and it's time for another voicemail video. Now this is a voicemail video with a difference. This is actually, I think it's fairly safe to say, a hate message. Now, <laughs> I do get occasionally voicemails coming through where the person has abused the voicemail, shall we say, to send through a hate message. And usually I'm able to figure out within the first two or three seconds, just from the tone of voice, that it's a hate message and it just instantly gets deleted and I don't listen to it. Interestingly, the hate messages also uh, are usually anonymous. So if a voicemail comes through and there is no email address with it, that's usually a good sign that it's going to be a hate message. Not that I automatically don't listen to voicemails that are anonymous because every now and then, in fact I think some of the ones that we're going to be listening to in the coming weeks, every now and then there's a really good message that's anonymous. But again, when the voicemail comes through and it's anonymous, there's no email address, usually it's, hmm, okay, what are we in for here? And so if I detect in the tone of voice that it's a troll, uh, within the first few seconds, I, I just delete it and don't listen because I have a scorched earth policy when it comes to trolls. I don't give them attention. In this instance, I'm willing to make an exception because this was quite um, an imaginative and innovative <laughs> hate message where the chap only reveals the true extent of his hatred right at the end. And I'm playing this for you, I guess, to demonstrate how messed up some people can be. I think that sometimes there's a naivety. Sometimes we like to think, don't we, that everyone's basically a good person. Um, there isn't such thing as an evil person. Everyone's basically good. They're just a bit misled on occasion. I think every now and then it's good to have a dose of reality and understand just how evil people can be. So in the interests of hopefully shaming this person, I'm going to play the message and I've actually had to edit the message because it was so bad. And I would get in trouble with YouTube if I played everything that this individual has to say. So with all of that out of the way, let's play this message. Dear Lloyd Evans, hi there. My name is uh, Russell C. And uh, I am a witness, and I've been disfellowshipped twice now, both times now for sexual immorality. And I, I have to say that I do agree with you on certain things, like, for example, the witnesses um, boycott on beards, or they'll tell you that, oh, and certain countries or in certain parts of even the United States, they'll tell us, oh, our brothers have beards. Just we just don't do that here. And right. That in fact, you have to get a haircut. You have to wear a suit and a tie. And um, they take you not wearing a tie as a sign of re rebellion. Yes, I agree. All of that is ridiculous. And that's just right. And you have, you know, certain brothers and sisters who are busybodies in other people's affairs. And oh, you, oh, and you know, they're quick tell on you and oh and you know Russell did this and Russell did that and right there is definitely a collective conscience going on but I, I just have to say that you know there's a collective conscience everywhere there's a collective conscience in your home right now and you whether you realize it or not you are the head of your own collective conscience and another thing and I, I actually two t-shirts of yours that do interest me one is shunned, definitely, because I have been shunned twice now. I am trying to work my way back, but old habits die hard. And your t-shirt, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses announcing global genocide. You know, I like that t-shirt, but maybe, 
not for the reasons that you're thinking. I know that you mean that in the most negative way possible, but I believe that that's a good thing. I believe that there is tons of scum in the world. There are undesirables. There are just incorrigibly evil, wicked people. And yes, and just like every other kingdom beforehand, when it comes in and it establishes a new rule, you're e you either get with the side of that kingdom or you get swept aside. It's just like every other nation in, in, in history. And this whole Caliphate. thing about, you know, oh, what we have in the United States, you can tell them from the United States, but this whole thing about, oh, you know, every culture is equal and we have to represent every culture equally, it doesn't work. It, it definitely does not work. And I, I think Europe actually may be worse. So at this point, he goes on a tirade about Muslims. This guy is fiercely anti-Muslim. And when I say anti-Muslim, it's not just um, it's not just criticism of fundamentalist Islam. He literally says all Muslims. So he's anti-Muslim. So I've bleeped that part out. But that's kind of ironic, given that he's only just been romanticizing the idea of essentially a caliphate where a kingdom comes in and dictates what everyone must believe which is sort of what he's criticizing when it comes to Muslims. Anyway, let's proceed with this message. And I went on a bit of a tangent there, but yeah, definitely against the Islamic religion. But yeah, as I said before, I agree, I agree with the global genocide. I agree with the homophobia. Apparently, you must not have a lot of gay friends. Listen, I have a gay uncle, and he told me that tight pants are gay. They are a sign that you are a gay bottom and you like to whether yeah. you agree with that or not, well, that has it's nothing to do with that. anything. That's what it is. And as for the patriarchy, I agree with the patriarchy. We aren't patriarchal enough. Have you heard the song of Precious Daughter? Oh, my God. Or have you... Uh, let me see here. I'm contacting you the week of November 26th. Please look at the watchtower that we are considering this Sunday. It's, it's called Support Women in Jehovah's Service. Literally, a, a complete feminist piece of drivel. Oh my God, I'm going to despise the watchtower that we're going over. Right, and also when that song came out, Precious Daughter, they literally dedicated that entire month to Women's Month. I never thought I would see something like that. But you, you know what? I believe that, you know, Jehovah sees all things, he will correct things, and you know what? I'm looking forward to being on the other side and hauling away your dead carcass. Take care. Bye. Charming. <laughs> so, yes, what an extraordinary message, and what a messed up, damaged individual. Isn't it scary to think? Because he is... Uh, disfellowship. So I think we can call him Pomo, physically, sorry, Pomi, physically out, mentally in. He's been disfellowshipped twice, but he clearly is holding on to the indoctrination and to the uh, genocidal delusions of the religion in particular, which he is apparently enthralled by. Doesn't this highlight? that frankly, some people deserve to be in a cult. I mean, when someone is this messed up in the head that they relish the idea of genocide. He likes my global genocide t-shirt because he agrees with global genocide. That's how messed up he is. He wants billions of people dying on a global scale because they're not Jehovah's Witnesses. Does it sort of begin to make sense now, when you listen to this, how you could have such a thing as a governing body? People who are just okay with it, despite knowing all sides, and I know I try to give the governing body as much benefit of the doubt as possible, 
And I keep saying, look, it can be both cynical and genuine delusion. Well, haven't we sort of heard that here? This guy is both cynical and deluded. He speaks about his own indiscretions that have led to him being disfellowshipped. And he says, oh, well, you know, old habits die hard. Old habits die hard, do they? Did you say that during your judicial committee when you were before the elders trying to convince them of your repentance? Oh, well, you see, brothers, old habits die hard. <laughs> That's his attitude. And he's trying to get reinstated. By the sound of things, he is attending meetings over Zoom because he talks about... Um, not looking forward to a forthcoming watchtower because it's too feminist, in his opinion. This character will be showing up on a Zoom, on a congregation Zoom meeting. He'll be there in his tie, which he, apparently he hates. <laughs> he, that's, that's his biggest gripe against the organisation. Not the cover-up of abuse, not necessarily the shunning, um, not the blood transfusions, not the domestic violence. His biggest gripe is not being able to have a beard if he wants. But he's going to be there on the Zoom call, all looking nice and pretty, well-groomed, and with his tie. And everyone's going to be looking at him, thinking, oh, you know, he's disfellowship, but good on him. He's showing a repentant attitude. And yet he comes on my channel, which he watches, um, saying, oh, well, old habits die hard. <laughs> and by the way, uh, I'm going to be, what does he put it? How does he put it? I'm going to be uh, picking up what's left of your carcass on the other side of Armageddon. But he's looking forward to that. You know, I have infinitely more respect for believing Jehovah's Witnesses who have obnoxious ideas, despicable ideas, because they genuinely believe. I have more respect for them than I have for creeps like this, than I have for Watchtower apologists. Watchtower apologists are uniformly cowards and hypocrites. I don't like to generalise usually, but when we're talking about Watchtower apologists like this guy, they are. I mean, he doesn't leave an email address. He doesn't want to be contacted. <laughs> he's hiding behind anonymity. All he's done is leave the name Russell. What does that tell us? He doesn't want us to know who, who he is or what his contact details are because he's terrified of having his bottom spanked by his elders if they were to find out that he's left this message. And he's a total hypocrite because he, <laughs> he relishes the idea of people like me who have logical, conscientious objections to the Jehovah's Witness religion being slaughtered, while hypocrites like him, who ignore the instructions about not engaging with apostates, get to scoop up our remains. He wants to live in a world where hypocrisy and evil and blind devotion to an authority is rewarded, even though he doesn't agree with some of the teachings. I mean... <laughs> Where do you even begin to untangle the depths of his hypocrisy? The fact that he thinks I deserve to die because I'm an apostate, even though he's an apostate. He disagrees with the organisation. It's not fanatical enough in his mind. He genuinely expects to be respected for being a horrendous sexist who thinks that the organisation isn't sexist enough and shouldn't have done the song Precious Daughter, and shouldn't be making Watchtower articles where it commends women. That, for him, is one of the great evils of the organisation, that it isn't 
quite sexist enough. Isn't it scary to think that people like this are freely in circulation around us? We could come into contact with someone like that in our day-to-day -day lives. And if he's capable of just the evil that he's disgorged in just that four minutes, what other evil is he capable of? Chilling. But this, unfortunately, again, is what we're up against. I think that to varying degrees, you can say that the same sort of fanaticism, the same sort of hypocrisy, the same sort of cowardice and the same sort of delusion is fueling the men at the very top. They're not interested in honest debate, are they? This creep's never going to come on my channel with his webcam and with his full name because he's a total coward. And again, I'm happy to play messages like that sometimes, so long as it serves a purpose. Um, and in this case, the purpose is to hopefully shame the individual. Um, and also, just a cautionary warning that people like this exist and are in circulation. And we shouldn't be naive as to their presence. But that's all I have for you. A voicemail with a difference. Uh, normal service will resume with some more uplifting voicemails in the near future. Uh, but that's all I have for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the John Cedars channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching.